Good morning, you guys. So uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful day. It's supposed to get up to like 20 degrees, I think, which is pretty dang warm for us here in October. Um, we're going to have three more really nice days. I think I see a high of 25 coming, which is just about unheard of at this date in October for us. Um, and no wind. Hear that? There's no wind. Is that even a thing? I don't even know if that's a thing, you guys. So anyway, the sprayers are all going, like they're all going ham down there. We're trying to get as much spraying done because uh, next week, um, like this is October 7th. So my birthday is actually tomorrow. Um, next week, it's supposed to be, get down to like maybe highs of 10 degrees Celsius, but it's supposed to be 75 to 80 kilometer winds. Again, welcome to Southwest Saskatchewan in the fall. So we're going to try to take really good advantage of these beautiful days. And one of the things we're doing other than spraying is edging. Oh Mike, what the heck is edging? Is that like some, you're doing some sort of painting artwork? No. It, the edge is actually the granular chemical that we're actually putting down. And uh, so I just call it edging because I'm putting down, I'm, I'm, I'm applying edge. And uh, so what that is, it's just a granular, it's yellow, it's a little granular chemical that we blow down and uh, we put it typically in front of lentils. Now you can fall apply edge or you can spring apply edge, but in my experience, fall apply is better. It just seems to work better and uh, Right now, all your fields are super dry, right? You don't even have a slough. What is a slough? You don't, there's nothing to go around because it's just bone dry out there. Where the spring, it's muddy, you got lots of sloughs, a lot more going around stuff, and then the sloughs don't get edged and so on and so forth. Well, Mike, wouldn't you just drown out the stuff then if you went through the sloughs now? Yeah, that could happen. But if you didn't have a lot of snow, then, then they would be fine. So, and it's way easier. Who wants to go around 15 sloughs in a field when you can just go up and back, up and back, up and back in the fall? Anyway. Here we go. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of walk you around this and kind of explain what I'm doing here. Obviously, I have the seven, uh, the 720 tractor on it, and uh, this is basically kind of homemade. No, I didn't make this, but just bear with me here. This used to be a flexi coil Harrow Packer bar. Okay, that's what it used to be. Well, Mike, what the heck is a flexi coil Harrow Packer bar? Well, if you're not very familiar with that, I'm gonna try and explain it here. All right, so just bear with me. So on the inside and off these bolts, there would be a little chain here. You can see the remnants of a chain here on all these. So typically two of these, two, would hold up one harrow. It would be about, well, about four feet wide, give or take, and about five or six feet long. And then up there, See those those uh, U hooks or whatever? It would also hold a big packer. So two of these would also hold a big packer. It's a they they're coiled. It's a big coil. They're really heavy. Okay, they're really heavy. All like a harrow packer bar loaded up with packers and harrows is super duper heavy. And uh, so I removed all that. I don't need it. Obviously, I'm not interested in harrow packing. And that that was a thing that was typically done more. Oh shoot, this thing is. Probably in the 90s, the 80s. That was more of a thing back then when you seeded with discers. When you seeded with discers, you guys don't know what a disker is. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, a Massey 360, I call a disker. If you go north like we're Ashton, she calls a disker a double disc. Not to be confused with a double disc and a disker. A disker is what I call what we can seed with, okay? You just Google Massey 360 disker, and it also has packers on it. And... Uh, you always had to go round and round, round and round, round and round, round and round, round and round. And it had a little box on it and you always had to take your grain truck with a drill fill or you, you bucketed, you bucketed your grain into your, your seeder. Okay, it was a Massey 360 disc, you Google that. That's how I learned how to seed. So anyway, then the, the, the trend was back then is you would run this thing over it. Why, why would you do that? That's a very good question. It's already packing it behind the disc or well, discers leave very rough seed bed okay they just do and uh, so guys would go out there and they would kind of level it out with the harrow and then repack it well we don't do that anymore uh, technology is definitely advanced and we use precision air drills and so on and so forth but long story short we had this thing still kicking around from back in the old days 
and uh, we stripped off the Packers, we stripped off the Harrows, and we put a Valmar. A Valmar is that red box, okay? That's actually made by Valmar. Actually, it's made by Salford. They call it a Valmar. And uh, so what this does, this is, you can put two to three bags of edge in here, okay? And then it meters out. I have to hold that. It just meters out. Hold on one second here. I got it pinned up. So this thing meters out like this. And this whole thing would be covered in edge, which is yellow. That's this stuff. Okay. And it meters out and it falls, falls, falls into here. All the way along. And each one of these represents one hose going back. Mike, what's that? Okay. So each one of those represents one of these hoses. See? Now you can understand. And each hose represents one, two, three, four, all the way back, so on and so forth, okay? So then air blows this stuff and it hits here. See how the paint's gone? It hits here and it sprays sideways to about here, to about here, and then that's where this one sprays sideways and then they kind of meet in the middle. Does that make sense? So, you, so now you guys got it. Okay, you guys got it. So. Mike, how are the rollers driven? Very good question. This ground wheel, it's just ground drive. So I just pick it up, drop, the, drop this thing on the ground, and then it's gonna go like this. The faster I go, the faster the wheel goes, the faster the rollers go. Make sense? That's all that drives it. So then this hydraulic fan, yes, it's hydraulic. And here's your regulator. So if you were gonna go, I don't know, a higher speed, Maybe you were gonna put down, like you only put down like 20 or 22 or four pounds or something in the fall, right? So, and you would put less than that in the spring. So this regulates your fan speed. All it is is just a valve and it's pretty simple. I like it, it's no sensors on it, it's super simple. You wanna regulate your hydraulic motor, you just put it up to here, tighten it down. There's your fan, blows it into here, kinda of like an air drill. And so there's serious suction right here because the air comes up here and goes poof, that way. Not in here, out here, okay? And then this thing just rolls it all into here and then that's how you edge. Makes sense. Um, I'll show you inside the box here. So, this is the inside. So you just keep, you can, this will hold about three or so bags of edge, give or take. And yes, I got some cracks, had to, had to do some welding and some fixing because vibration kills steel. And um, yeah, it's sitting on rubbers, but, Vibration kills steel after a while. Anyways, that's how that goes. So, this did not come with this. Obviously, this is green, that is red. We put this on. I ran all the hoses, because I know about how, you know, all the spacing, they tell you the spacing, so on and so forth. Now you're like, man, there's a lot of wheels on this thing. Look at all the wheels. Well, you don't need half these wheels. You could take these off. You could just run one on each end, because you gotta remember, these wheels are big wheels, but they were meant for a lot of weight. Make sense? Makes sense. I have some more questions, Mike. I figured you would. Um, what's with this chain? Well, you see these wings are actually pulled by cable, which I just kind of have the cable wrapped up around here for right now. See? So the cable actually ties to here. There's, there's only two, one on each end. And it goes all the way back. Technically, it would come out to here because you can't put the cable on until you're winged out and it would lock on right here. Either here or here, depending on what angle you want, okay? That's what she'll lock on and then that's how you pull. Okay, so that doesn't explain the chain, Mike. Well, <clears throat> when you have harrows and packers on this thing, it creates a horrendous amount of drag. Like you actually have to pull it. The minute you stop, it stops right? Because it's heavy. Well, what happens when you take all the harrows and all the packers off? I'll give you one second to think about that. Two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. You'd have no drag. So since it's just an old school cable, what happens when you have no drag? Well, as soon as you go down a hill or stop, those booms aren't stopping. There's no drag on it. She's just going to keep right on going until it smacks your tractor. Or who knows, like your boom's gonna be passing you going down the hill. You know what I'm saying? So you have to make some sort of either drag or you can just throw this little Mickey Mouse system that I got on here, 
when you're boomed out, I tighten down on this boomer. I'll explain when we're in field mode. Don't worry. I'll explain more when we're in field mode. And that keeps it, that keeps your booms from passing you. And when you stop, your booms have to stop. Make sense? Otherwise, you stop. They're going to keep right on rocking. Bad news bears. Okay. I've explained enough. You guys got it figured. You're basically pro edgers by this point. I should actually probably get to work and uh, start loading this thing up and we're gonna get we're gonna get going what we do I'm actually gonna pop these rollers out you can pop these rollers out by doing this oh well, actually it's it's these ones back here pop that back get this thing out of here pop this one off okay I need two hands basically what I want to do is I want to yank the roller out here there we go I pulled the roller out so why did I pull the roller out? Good question you asked. Um, it's because I want to get back here and clean it. So this is what the edge actually looks like. That's it. So obviously you can't go in wind, right? <sighs> Blows pretty easy. So I want to make sure I'm going to clean this and make sure there's no chunkies in here. Because if you get stuff like this, for example, let's see if I can't yank a chunk off here. Anyway, you get a chunk in there and you get it super hard and how Mike how do I get a chunk in there moisture like this so you get a ch hard chunk stuck in there because it's been sitting for a long time you get some moisture in there it will get really hard and this is the roller so this is good this is good this is good this isn't good you see how it's all worn so the edge actually fits in here and then that's how it rolls it out right that's how it grabs it that's about how much it takes at a time not very much well, it's not going to take very much here. It's completely wore right out. You know how that happened. You got a chunk in there, and that roller's just rolling on it, and it wrecks your rollers. See a little bit of grind here, a little bit more here. Now, for the little for the edging that I'm doing, I, this doesn't matter. Okay, it, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's all going to mix off in the end. But if you did, if you wrecked your whole roller like that, you have to buy a new roller, and they're quite expensive. They're those rollers. So you want to make sure they're very clean. I'm going to clean it all out, and then I'm going to do this one. Then I'm going to turn on the fan to make sure all, all these are clean. Imagine if there's a mouse in there. I stuck my finger. Holy crap, I would be screaming like a schoolgirl. And uh, so on and so forth. Okay? You guys got that. Good. All right, so it took me a little while, but I got it cleaned out. Because when I was cleaning it out, I dropped a chunky down one of these. Like an idiot, of course. So I try to fish that out of there because that won't blow out. You know, that just plug a port off. So, that's done at least. Now, pop these things down. The reason why you put those shields down is to keep the wind. Because if you have any kind of wind that will hit this, it'll just blow it off the roller, right? It's just like dust. And this, uh, this unit is 80 feet. 80 feet long. It's an 80 foot. Uh, if I hadn't already said that. And it's very simple. Have I ever told you guys how much I really enjoy simplicity? Oh, someone's coming. Oh, Terry's just coming into the yard here. Okay. I think I need a little chain lube here. Haven't run this thing in a little while, so. Oh yeah, and then to set all your different rates. All these different gears. Different gears, pull off different gears, put different gears on, and so on and so forth. Okay, you guys got it figured. You guys have a few other questions I'm gonna quickly try and answer. Mike, yeah, it's 80 feet, yeah. You have one of them, yeah. The Harrow looks like it's dated in the 70s, yeah. You don't cover all your ground with this thing. No, no I do not. Um, we're really not set up to put down edge and granular. Like if you were gonna do that, you would either want a big floater. Well Mike, what's a floater? You can get them just about any, any make where they have gigantic big dry boxes you just dump in there. Not to be confused, just because it's a floater does not mean it can apply edge. Because most floaters, you know, have a 10 ton or whatever type dry box for fertilizer. But they just have big belts or chains or something, right? They're just pulling all that fertilizer out and it drops it into a spreader. You can't have a spreader. A spreader, a spin spreader will not, will not um, apply edge. Can you imagine dumping chaff or dust on a spin spreader? How far is that going to get? Maybe five feet? No, you have to have booms. So I know like the case, the row gators, um, they all have booms and I think you can get them up to 60 or 70 feet. 
And though it has a big dry box, you can also use that for fertilizer. You can use booms, um, have a tube and blows everything out. Um, but typically they only have like a front portion of their big box that's actually designated to have meter rollers in it because you have to have a meter roller. You don't have these meter rollers for fertilizer, okay? So then you got to go and spend a horrendous amount of money. You know, it's actually more money than a high clearance sprayer for maybe 20% of the use of your big dry box that you have. So, you know, I guess if we were going to be really doing it, but we're not really doing it. We typically use liquid forms. You can't get you can't get a liquid form of edge, at least not here. You can get liquid forms of Trifurian and all these different types of other stuff. You can all you can put down Volterra. We we do that. You can put all these different types of chemicals down, but not edge. And I find that edge only works half the time at best of times. But when it does work that half the time, it's pretty good. Now the downside is it's pretty much a buck a pound. So it's freaking expensive. Actually, I think it's over a buck a pound. So it's freaking expensive. So uh, you gotta be very careful with it and uh, apply it only when need be. But in saying that, all chemicals are expensive. Long story short, we use this for a few fields here and there. Otherwise, oh gosh, you imagine roading this thing long distances, have wheel bearings going. Although Frank, big Frank, uh, he, he packed the bearings up, tightened them up, did a lot of maintenance on it already. He's awesome like that. So, okay. I get distracted. All right, so now we're just going to do some chain lube, and uh, I managed to find this in the shop. We got some good quality John Deere chain lube here. Probably spent fifty dollars too much for a twenty dollar can of lube, but you know what? We're going to give her a go. Hold on, I got to switch hands. Most definitely not a lefty. Nothing against the lefties. Sometimes I make uh, left hand uh, uh, coffee mug holder jokes, and uh, my younger brother Brian, he's actually um left-handed so I like I like to give him a hard time all the time Mike are you even hitting that chain just stop I am doing this through my phone okay you know how hard that is this one man it's like watching I don't know what this is like watching good enough there there's 30 seconds of your guys' life you'll never get back. <laughs> oh, man. Mike, when are you ever going to do this uh, 10, Ideal 10 summary and uh, Ideal 9, what they've done to the updates summary? Look at guys. I'm sorry, but I am literally going from one job to the next job to up to Ashton's family, to up there, all around the place. I don't have time right now. I will get that done as soon as I can. <laughs> as soon as I can, okay? This is the camp shed quite messy but it is what it is we got a whole pile of grain bags still kicking around in here there we got all five bags this is edge it comes in these mini bulk bags hard as a rock but don't worry it'll crumble down so I'm gonna go get a skid steer and uh, pallet fork actually I don't know okay I gotta think about this I will get back to you this is what we're gonna use to load it actually typically see a skid steer won't quite lift high enough and you have to be able to get out. So we got this thing that was made in 1953, I'm pretty sure. So we'll give her a, we'll give her a go here. Oh, look at that. I haven't run this thing very much, so. Okay. Nope. Nope. That one tilts you this way or this way. Okay. There it is. Okay, it looks like we're in gear number three. That sounds like ramming speed to me. So I'm pretty sure that's exactly what I would want. Park brake. Give her a little, give her a little go juice. While we're going backwards, that's a good sign. Oh yeah, I should lift those things up. How do I do that here? Looks like this is in here. Oh, then it work. You know what? I like them, I like them where they are anyway, get the camera. Where am I going here? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Come on, baby. Come on, old Betsy. Come on. You got this. Uh, if you're wondering about the can, that's just uh, for the drip of the hydraulic leak. That's how I like to roll right now. Dump the can 
hand back into the over. Oh, oh, she's leaking a little. <laughs> Can't fall. I have to dump it back into the reservoir. Oh my goodness. What an operation are we running around this operation? Mike, what the crap is with the Mississippi River going through your yard? Well, that's what happens when you run a tank over. I kind of like it. Reminds me of fishing. No, I don't even fish. Okay, we're gonna park right here. Now we're gonna hop in this. Okay, no, this is where we're gonna go. Stop this thing! We're gonna use our uh, old pallet jack here. Now we do have a fancy dancy electric one that will roll all around in here, but it kind of kicked the biscuit for, and it was brand new. So we actually had to take it back up to Saskatoon where we got it from. I can't, it was a Wayjax. It was a Wayjax jack. And uh, it was electric. Oh, that thing is nice. It just, you just push up a handle, it all drives itself, it lifts it up and down. Well, we're working old school now. I just realized, you guys, pretty sure that um, this video is already like 17 minutes long. Like, holy crap. Like, I guess I can't show you all this kind of stuff. It adds up too much. It takes too much time. Sorry, it takes a lot of time. Now I just do Jackie, Jackie, Jackie. And there. Our pallet's off the ground. Now it's just old school. Oh boy. Hoo -ah! Mike, you gotta eat more Wheaties. Hoo -ah! There it goes. Okay. I gotta do this one on my own. Like, unless you guys wanna help me. Everybody grab. Everybody grab this. Let's go. Oh, no. No, I gotta let you go. This is gonna be a two-hander. We figured it out. We were actually snagging right here on that pallet. Okay. Come on. I gotta eat more Wheaties. Oh yeah, you always wanna go this way. Yeah, you guys get the idea. I'm gonna see if I can't stab one of these edge bags. I know that's your question. Mike, how often does this go bad? Oh, it happens. Mike, you're gonna hit the bag. Mike, what are you doing? I'm trying, look it. I know what I'm doing. Oh, I'm actually a little bit, there we go. Get my park brake. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. Okay, calm down. I'm gonna run the pallet forks right through here, okay? And I'm gonna pick one bag off at a time. Okay. We're pushing this through. You wanna make sure, I don't know, you don't smuck your shop or something here. We won't do that. At least not too hard, I hope. Oh, jump out here. Oh yeah, easy peasy. Life is breezy. We got this. We gotta got lift it up, turn our park brake off, put this thing in full ramming speed reverse. Mike, why don't you cut the plastic? Oh, you watch. Look at that. That's why I don't cut the plastic. Lift her up a little more. Try not to run into the fuel tank. Now I'll yank the plastic off. And we just uh, lift it up. like so stop before you smuck something apply the park brake because we're always safety first around this camp figure out how to get out of my door what the hey pull up Mike no, push down oh my goodness <laughs> oh my goodness okay once that's done you run up here, you evaluate the situation, you put your head under here, because we're safety first. You yank out these. This you gotta untie the bottom here. Once you open these bottoms up, they don't like to tie back up very good, so hopefully you can you don't screw that up. So there's one plastic here, gets you into it, and then you pull out this guy, you pull out this tail. 
See? You guys see that okay? Okay. And then there's another one on the tail. Where is it here? There you go. There it goes. That's it. That's what it looks like. Oof. And then it does this, and you gotta shake it around. It tastes good. Preferably you'd want to be downwind, but I really don't care. Give it a good shake. Make sure you get everything out of it. There we go. And then I'll just yank it off. Then that's garbage. I'll clean that up. We'll go grab two more. Because we can put three in here. Remember, three. That's it, you guys. That's how it's done. I have just burnt up a horrendous amount of time. I thought that I, we'd actually be edging already by this time. So you're going to have to stay tuned for the next video when we actually go edging. And I know what you're thinking, Mike, holy crap. Please don't tell me that this is how you load this thing in the field. No, no, it's not how we load it. Uh, typically, if we're actually looking to cover some ground, um, we load up a semi-trailer with pallets of edge. And then we take the, uh, the 516 fent with the pallet fork. And then we have somebody there to help load. It just speeds up the process a whole heck of a lot more. Um, but edge always comes in mini bulks. This is about as efficient as you can get, other than getting a big floater, which would maybe gain you... You might get double the size. You might get six bags in a floater, like in its actual compartment. But uh, for the little bit that we're going to be doing here, this is going to be just good enough. Otherwise, I'm going to load this thing. I'll catch you guys later. Adios. Adios.